Did I just start? Where is that thing in the book? Please make sure that you complete the register. When you choose the list on the list of the modules there, uh, or the list of session, um, look for research analytics literacies for psychology. That is the session that we having for this afternoon. Um, that is applicable to all those who are new to the UNISA environment. Um, so. And I think there is my name next to it, E-Boy. Just choose that. Um, OK, so let's begin. I'm going you see, to... <clears throat> it's very, very soft. I can hardly hear. You can hardly hear me. And now, yes. is it much better now? No. OK. Otherwise, then also increase your volume on your side. Uh, I'm not sure. I can hear you fine, so it might be her sound. Yeah. Okay. I can also hear you fine. All right. Okay, so the recording has started. Okay, so we, we are going to continue from where we left off. I know that on the WhatsApp, someone said, can we do the 2020 paper? I haven't seen it, so I haven't even downloaded it because uh i have been in a session the whole morning so i haven't even had enough time to to eat because i'm eating in between my sessions and yeah so we're going to follow what we have discussed so we going to continue with 2017 october november where we left off and we said because someone sent the 2019, so we're going to use the 2019 May exam paper. And I don't want to use the June or the, the October, November, because now we're discussing the October, November. Maybe you can take the 2020 and discuss it yourself or work through it. And if you have any difficulties or questions, you can always chat, um, post the question on the WhatsApp group, and then we can continue the conversation. Remember that WhatsApp group is created for you to be able to engage with other people and ask questions. So don't be shy to use that forum as well to ask questions because we have limited number of hours that I can assist you online. So let's continue the conversations on there as well. So welcome to your exam preparation. Let's begin. <clears throat> Madam Boy. Yes. Are we going to look at those question marks from yesterday as well? Yes, we starting from where we left off and we I know that we had two or three questions that we want to go back and revisit. Um, we will do that as well. Let me share. Okay, so okay, so we're going to start with the questions that we had question marks on so that then we can continue. So I've made a mark on some of them and some we already did also answer, but we had some question marks on them. So like question number 39. 
So we were not sure whether is it the effect size or the power of a statistical test or whether we need to be saying we set the lower significance value. So I have an answer for you and your answer is actually even in your study guide. Uh, it's on your, I think, page 85. So remember <clears throat> when we talk about the type one error, which is your level of significance. And that is where I said with your level of significance, uh, because it's a type one error of rejecting your null hypothesis when it's not true, uh, when it was sup not supposed to be rejected. So, and I said, this will not have effect on anything, especially the level of significance, because that you set as a researcher well in advance. Now, the question that we asked was, when a researcher do uh, find some small differences between the mean based on the large sample and found that they differ significantly, and to determine whether the outcome is of practical importance. Here they're talking about, if I'm going to be making a decision, and I know, for example, that that um, outcome, I should reject the null hypothesis. And the outcome that I get is to reject that null hypothesis because it's significant. Remember when it's significant, we say if the p-value is less than alpha, then we reject the null hypothesis because if our p-value that we have calculated, if it's 0, 0,00, which is less than, our alpha of 0, 0,05, if we have set the alpha of 0, 0,05, we would reject the null hypothesis because then this is significant. The p-value says this is statistically significant, but we will still reject the null hypothesis. And that is what is meant by the power of the test, by rejecting the null hypothesis when it should be rejected if and that is our answer for option number 49. Our answer is option two. That is That was one of those questions that we skipped. The other question that we struggled to find the answer to was this one, where it asked that, um, what would you expect the probable value of the mean of a sample to be? And in a normal circumstance, if we, if not when we are doing the, uh, uh, the testing or the hypothesis, but let's say we calculate a confidence level. So which means there is an upper boundary and the lower boundary. So we know what the value of the mean is, and we know with the value of our mean, our null hypothesis, which here it says if the null hypothesis is true, then it means we're not rejecting the null hypothesis. And we know when we calculate our Z value here, we said, uh, what did we get when we calculate this Z value? Let me just go back and calculate it again because we said something like we can't, it's undefined. Um, and when it's- I think it was, I think it was 8.838 somewhere there. Yes, I think so as well. I think so. Uh, now my calculator is acting up on me. Okay, so so it means we can't find the p-value on that. So therefore, it means our null hypothesis we cannot see in terms of the values that we are they are given here. We could not determine whether whether we're going to de de, um, reject or not reject. But here they say, if the null hypothesis is true, so therefore it means here they're telling us, if 
we're not rejecting the null hypothesis. What would we expect the probable uh, value of our mean be? So in order for us to be able to find that, uh, and that's why I wanted to use my calculator, in order for us to do that, we know that the answer cannot be uh, 25. Sorry. Uh, just want to to my calculator. My calculator has went some way. I just want to open my calculator quickly. Sorry about that. Uh, Yeah, okay, back to normal. So, if we say our sample mean is 20, if we say it's 20, then the top part will be zero. So, therefore, it means our z value will be equals to, to zero. And therefore, it means our z, our probability will be 50% of, um, uh, the probability of this and then we and if we use alpha of 0 0.05 for a 50 percent then we are going to reject the null hypothesis as well so it's either we can choose one but if we say our mean value is not equals to 20 therefore we say it can either be uh 25 and we know with 25 it cannot be defined so uh the correct option on this one would be it can either be any of them which is not 25 because with 25 it's not and it cannot be not equal uh, it cannot be more than 25 or it can also be uh not equals to 20. so therefore the answer should be option number three. And then the other one that we put a question mark on was 44. And we did also find the answer for that. We found it on the book as well. So to say it will be the ability of a test to detect whether there is a significant relationship because we went and looked at it because for the effect size for the relationship, we said we use the R squared, not the effect, uh, not the D cohen, cohen D uh, effect, but we can use the R squared, which is the ability to test if there is a significant relationship, even if it does not exist because it's the R squared, even if it's 0 0.15, it will still find which um, values um, influences your dependent variable as well. And quick, the quick other question. pattern. Quick, quick question. How yes. do we know whether we have to use the Cohen formula or not? Yeah, you see. So in terms of the options that they give you here, so with the with the effect size of the, co the Cohen D, it talks to um, whether is the effect smaller or larger in terms of the differences that are there. So here they're not talking about the differences. Um, and also, it, um, they will also refer to also whether if your sample sizes are increasing or decreasing as well, uh, your, your sample size or your your standard deviations. So it has to be in relation to those. So since they're not mentioning any of, um, actually they are mentioning the sample size, yeah, but if you read the, the sentence that talks to the sample size, 
it says irrespective of the sample size and we know with that one we need to look at the sample size uh, based on the law of large numbers the bigger the sample size the effect uh, your model will have so that is why this one is not correct but uh, because also they here they also included the relationship if they didn't include any question that based on the relationship, we wouldn't have even looked at the R squared, which is also calculating the effect size as well, because with the difference between the two is that the other one is done on the numerical values and whereas on two numerical values, whereas with this one is made up of on one variable, one uh, group or one variable, something like that. Um, and that is how you can differentiate between the two. OK, so the other question is, I, I think 45, we did find the answer to it because we said we, based on the information given, we can use the sample information to calculate the Z score, even though we know with the reservations that we can't do that. But that is the information that we are given we can use that to find that probability and we can say whether uh, where that probability falls and we did calculate that and we found that it was 0, 0,1 and that is why we said it is greater than 0, 0,1 um, and it cannot be between 0, 0 and 0, 0,1 it has to be more than because the question was say if uh, the items are 10 or more. So it means it has to be bigger than, than 0, 0,1. So, and that's where we ended up. So we continuing from there. So question 45, 46, 46. Under which condition would a researcher use a t-test? Uh, and I think we did do this. Remember that? Under which conditions will a researcher use a t-test for a hypothesis testing about an unknown population mean? Under which conditions? One. The value of the mm is mm. The value of what? Number one. Yeah. The value, okay. the value of the population standard deviation should be unknown. This one it says the standard error, which is not correct, in which this one says it should be known, which is incorrect as well. Based on, base your answers to question 47 to 49 on the following scenario. Suppose that the memory span of adult is normally distributed with the mean of seven items and the standard deviation of two items. The researcher is investigating the impairment of memory among people who have been diagnosed as suffering from Kors Korsakoff. Yeah, that's the first time I hear that. Korsakoff uh, syndrome, a, a neurological disorder linked to chronic alcohol abuse. He intends to test his prediction on a sample of 50 persons who were, dis, uh, who were diagnosed as suffering from this syndrome. So we need to also identify what we given here. So if I go to the question first before I answer the questions, so we need 47 to 49, 47, 48, hypothesis, hypothesis, and what test, okay? since um, I don't want to identify things that I don't need there. So we need to test the pre this prediction on the sample of the person who was diagnosed with, uh, from this syndrome. Okay, so the first thing that you need to ask yourself, is this two samples or one sample? One sample, right? right. Are, we given, are we given a population or a sample standard deviation. We are given population standard deviation and the mean. So we know that our mean 
is seven and our standard deviation is two. So it means we know what our population is. The values for our population. And the researcher is investigating the impairment of memories among the persons who have been diagnosed as suffering from this syndrome. He intends to use this test to predict on a 50 sample persons. So we need to also ask ourselves, here yeah, they don't mention, or we need to also in our mind think, they don't say anything about one is bigger than the other, or he thinks that something is greater or more than or less than or anything like that. So we're going to assume here, yeah, we're going to do a two-tailed test, which is equal. So let's go answer the question based on the information that we've gathered. Remember that I've already analyzed the whole question or the whole paragraph, because now I know what I must look for. So the first one says, I need to state my null hypothesis. My null hypothesis based on the information, I already have an idea in terms of what my null hypothesis will be. I have my mean. So my null hypothesis should stay, state with the population parameter and should be equal. So my null hypothesis should state Number, Number two. 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 Three. I mean, option two. Option, option, option two. two. Yes, the mean hypothesis. Two. Yes, should state that the mean is equals to seven. But anyway, the null hypothesis, regardless of whether we we actually have also decided then, the null hypothesis always contains an equal sign. So it, this one wouldn't have been correct, and this one wouldn't be correct in any way whether we know what we need to be discussing or what null hypothesis should be. So number 48 says, which of the following is appropriate statement to use for testing the above prediction regarding the mean memory span? So since we know that from our question there, we know that we're doing a equal, which is a two tail. So what will be our alternative? Number two. Nope. Number three. It will be number three because if my null if my null hypothesis says equal, then my alternative will say not equal. But if the researcher would have said the uh, memory span of whoever we ever is less than, then I would use the less than. So we know in the you must be very careful as well in the alternative hypothesis, it does not contain an equal sign. Anywhere where you see alternative hypothesis, there should not be any sign with an equal sign, like equal, less than or equal, or greater than or equal. It should not be there. So that one would have been automatic disqualification. And then you are left with the two. And to determine whether one of one of the two is correct, you go back to the sentence. Anywhere on the sentence, if there is a less than, then you would have use the less than. If there was a greater than and there is a greater than here, you would have chosen that one. But because there was no such thing there, then we use the not equal. So that means number three is the right one. Miss Boy? Yes. So just on the on the question where you said if we automatically we can assume that they, when we don't see more than or greater than or less than, we can already assume that it's equal to Yes. Is that the general assumption that we make? Yes, because let's say for this sentence, they would have said, let, let me put it this way, he, he, they would have said something like, a researcher is investigating the impairment of the memory among the people who have, or who have been diagnosed as suffering from this, uh, and maybe they would have added like because it's more uh, it's more than the average population or something like that. So they would have added something that to that effect to say more than the average uh, uh, the, the memories their memory span is more than the average, which we know that the average is seven. So with that, then it will give you an idea 
or they would have said it's less than the average span of uh, like less than the the average span of adults memory whatever the thing is so you will get that in the question or in the statement that now we're doing a one tail test or a directional test or we're doing a two tail when it's quiet it's muted you don't find those kind of ways that tells you that one is superior than the other or one is bigger than the other then you must assume that that is not equal when you go to the alternative thank you okay so 40 oh. Why did I skip all of them? 49, testing the above prediction on a sample will require a mm, test. So based on the information that you have here in your alternative hypothesis, what type of a test are we doing? Number two. We're doing a, uh, okay. So some people, might get confused as well. So they, they, there are actually two questions that are, or two answers there that are correct. But because we're talking about the statistical test, so we need to also remember that with the statistical test, we're talking about which tail of the area are we going to be making a decision. So that will be a two tail test. Two tail statistical test. And when they ask about what hypothetical test or hypothesis test are we doing, we're doing a non directional test. Okay. So, two, yeah. So, this is for the entire hypothesis. And this is for when you go make a statistical decision. for the test and this is the hypothesis test. so this is the overall so overall says i am doing a non-directional test because it's both sides of the spectra the lower side and the upper side it's two tail and the test when i'm go to, going to make a decision i'm going to be looking at two tail of them because when I get my p-value, my p-value needs to be divided into the two, two sides, the lower side and the upper side. Okay. A pharmaceutical company claims that a new sleep which they are marketing will put people to sleep in less than 15 minutes. The researcher wants to test whether if the average time before people sleep after using the pill matches their claim. She uses the following hypothesis. Can you see the discussion that we had previously? You see, I just went and highlighted that less than because they mentioning less than. Look at how they put the hypothesis testing. Your null hypothesis claims that the mean is equals to 15. The alternative will claim that the mean is less than 15. And it's because I got it from here. If they didn't have that less than in there, they will say uh, the marketing will put people to sleep in 15 minutes. Then this would have been not equal because they say in less than five minutes, 15 minutes, then it is less than in your alternative. Suppose she tests this on a random sample of 40 research participants who suffer from insomnia. She finds that the mean time before the members of the sample fall asleep are after using the pill is 14.3. So that is the sample mean. The sample mean of 14.3 with the standard deviation, which is the sample standard deviation of 3.2. A subsequent t-test produces a two tail p value of 0, 0,0345. So we have our two tail p value and the level of significance was set at 0, 0,05. What is the absolute value or what is the value of the one tail one or directional p value? 
So, what you need to always remember is a two tail. Two times the p value gives you a two tail and a p value for one tail. When you go to the table and you go find the p value, you will find one p value. And if it's a two tail, you're going to multiply that two, the two. When you go to the table, you go find the p value or wherever they've calculated it, they give you the p value. And if you multiply that p value, you get two tail p value if you multiply it by two. So therefore, it means if they give you two, uh, a two tail, so they, it means there are two p values that they, they have on there. That's what you always need to remember. There is two of them in the p, in there two tail. So in order for you to take the value of a two tail p value and calculate a one tail p value, therefore it means this will be the two tail. Ah, come on. Flipping. It's writing on top of the other. Two tail p value. Divide by two. In order for you to find a one tail value, when you are given a two tail value, that will be the two tail value divided by two. I hope it makes sense. So in your mind, you need to always remember that. A two tail p value, there are two of them in that. Therefore, it means for a one tail p value, if you are given a two tail p value, you are going to take that two tail p value and divide it by two, half it, so that you can get one side of the p value. Because with a two tail p value, it will give you half of this side and half of this side. Both of them, they make out one p value. This side, of 0 0.025 and the side of 0 0.25. If you add them together, they will give you a p value of 0 0.05, which is one p value divided into two. So there are two of them. That is a two tail. So in order, so this will be a two tail p value that value will be your two tail p value which is that side and that side making up the two value if i am doing a one tail so let's say i'm only oh that one was the less than so if i'm only looking at this side if i'm only looking at this side then i'm looking at 0 0.025 so if i take this one value there so let's use that as an example now. I'm going to remove it from here. I'm going to put it here, 0, 0,0345. So therefore, it means this side and that side, they are, I need to divide them by two. So it's point zero three four five. Divide by two. This side is zero comma zero one seven two five, and this side, so this will be minus or whatever. You can leave it as positive; it doesn't matter. And this side is zero comma zero one seven two five. So you can see that for a two tail, because this is a two tail. For a two tail, there are two p values actually. So the one side on the upper, on the lower side, and one on the upper side, which makes up that p value. If I'm looking for one side, which is only the side of the less than based on my question, so therefore it means 
if I look at this, it means I'm looking for this side, which is 0, 0,01725. That is my p-value, so which means it's option number two. Understood? Is it clear? Confusing? Very clear for me. Happy? Happiness? Happiness. Happiness. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. A researcher wants to compare the mean of non-verbal reasoning score of a sample N is equal to 25 students with that of the general population. According to the literature, the non-verbal reasoning test which she uses was standardized to a population mean of 100 and the population standard deviation of 10. So we are given the population standard deviation. That is always very important to always remember when you read the questions, especially when it's about testing. That is very important because it will also give you much, much deep insight in terms of what you need to be doing or what questions can follow after that. What is the value of the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the mean, which is my sampling distribution question, which will be required to calculate the Z test statistic? So, Remember, they are talking about the sampling standard deviation or the, the standard deviation of a sampling distribution. Here they are asking you what will be the standard error. So standard deviation of a sampling distribution is your standard error, which is given by the population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. What is our population standard deviation? is 10. What is our n? Square root of 25. Calculate and tell me what is the answer. 2. 2. Should be, should be That's 2. 2. It's 2. Which is equals to 2, which is option 3. So, and I see that in this question paper, the standard error is been asked three times now. Question 55 or 52, what does it mean to say the difference between the mean of group A and group B is statistically significant? What does it mean to say the difference between the mean of group A and group B are statistically significant? One. We will say is true with number one because remember when the p value and we did this not so long now when the p value is less than your alpha you reject the null hypothesis so in most cases your p value will be significant at 0, 0,00 in most statistical application. Therefore, it means we will reject the null hypothesis and we will say the alternative is true. So that is why that will be true because if there is also, when we state the null hypothesis, we say there is no difference between the means. And then when we state the alternative, we say there is a difference. And if they are different, it means there, are, there is a statistical significance that there is a difference. It means the alternative is true. 
Okay. Based on your answer to question, or base your answer to question 53 and 54, a market researcher is asked to conduct a study to examine people's reaction to a movie trailer. He draws a random sample of 20 males and 20 females who saw the trailer. He asks them to indicate how likely it is that they will go and see the movie on a seven point scale, where one indicates not at all and seven indicates definitely. He wants to compare to establish whether the males and females differ in their intention to see the movie based on their exposure to the trailer. Suppose the researcher finds that the mean and the standard deviation for each group in the sample is as follows. So now you need to ask yourself the following question. Are this group dependent or independent? Male and female, so they are independent. Dependent. So, so now we're talking about independent groups. So we need to find it, the difference between the two independent groups. We also need to look at what you are given. Are we given a standard population, standard deviation, or sample? We given all sample. So it means we're going to be using a T distribution. So before that, we also need to look at the questions to make sure that we understand fully how to unpack the whole question. So we have 53 and 54. 53 asks for the hypothesis and 54 is asking what is the appropriate test. So we already did some of this up to 54, so we can go back to 53. Need to go back and read your question and see if your question. So this is where you can get some of the answers that you are looking for. He wants to compare to establish whether males and females differ in their intention. So they, he never said or they never mentioned anything about men being more than the opinions of men being more than females or the opinions of females being less than male or things like that. There is nothing like that. So what is it that we want to test here? When we go and do a hypothesis testing, what will be our statements that we need to do conduct? The null and hypothesis three. will state three. The null hypothesis will state that they are equal for may, the mean of males and mean of females. And the alternative will state that they are not equal because on here it's about equality. We're checking whether they are equal. So that will be option three. This one would have been an automatic disqualification because we don't state the hypothesis in relation to the sample statistics. So we only use the population parameters. Question number 54, which is the appropriate t-test or t-statistic to calculate to evaluate the significance? We know we already answered some of it, so it should be easy. Is it one, two, or three? Number one. It will one. be number it will be number one because we have two groups, males and females, and they are both independent groups. Remember to always ask yourself those questions. Does one influence the other? No. Am I taking from the same population and creating the groups where um, they do a pre-test and then they do a post-test? That is a dependent group. Um, where I take two different things, two different variables, then it's not dependent. But if I'm taking from the same, I give them the before and the after, that is the dependent group. So you always need to remember that. Ne? And it's also explained in that decision tree, the logic that you need to always apply. Question 55, a researcher is asked by a motivational speaker to establish whether a workshop on assertiveness training is effective. 
the researcher decides to use a particular questionnaire which tests an individual level of assertiveness. He presents the questionnaire to each of a sample of 50 participants in the workshop before it begins and once again after it has ended to the same participant. When analyzing these results, the researcher should use a statistical test for the I've already gave you the answer to this. Number two. Number two. That will be number two. Comparison of means for two dependent groups because we have the before the workshop and the after the workshop. 56. Which is the type two error in statistical significance? Rejecting the null hypothesis. When it's in fact true, not rejecting the null hypothesis, when it is in fact false, and rejecting the alternative when it is in fact true. Remember, that is that decision there. You say, had two error, we rejecting. The hypothesis. We reject H not when we should be when it's not supposed to be. H not is not rejected. H not should be rejected. So let's see what is the right question or what is the right answer. Let's check number one. Two. Number one. Number two. Number two. Number two. Number two. Number two. Number two. Yes, number two, I agree. Number two. Number two, not rejecting the null hypothesis when it fact it is false. Question 57. Two samples may be regarded as independent when there is no systematic relationship between the composition of one sample to the other. They were drawn at different occasions. They are both totally random. One. That will be number, number one. one. Because there should not be any bearing between the two samples. Whether even if they were selected when, they should not have any relation. 58. A sample of 70 people are tested on a test for assertiveness before and after the workshop in which they have um, in which they are given assertiveness training. Which of the following is the most appropriate formula for comparing the mean assertiveness score before the training with one after thereafter? Number nope. two. Number nope. two. Nope. Number three. Number three. three. Remember, here yeah, we're talking about dependent. So this one is to calculate the indie independent events. When you have your sample one and your sample two <laughs> are totally independent, males and females. This is when you have one sample when the population standard deviation is not known. This is when you have dependent sample because you have the before, the before and the after. In order for you to create the test statistic, you need to calculate the difference between the two to see if there are any differences. So that is the independent, so which means number three. The only correct answer there. Base your answer to the question 59 and 60 on the following scenario. A researcher compares a sample of children from a special school for gifted with the group of children randomly drawn from other schools on the test which measures the creativity of the children on a nine point scale. She wants to know whether the children from the school for gifted children is likely to have greater level of creativity 
planning to test this at alpha of 0, 0,01. Based on the sample, she finds the following. So she has all the measures, the sample statistics, the size, the mean, and the standard deviation of the children. And they also calculated the pooled values, which include also the pooled standard deviation. What is the appropriate alternative scenario? So going back to the question, read what the question they want to test. Is there any way in that question, are they mentioning things like greater than, more than? Number Ifa? three. If not. Uh, it's greater than. To uh, test greater that greater level. So therefore it means we're looking at number three. So that is the first thing that you always need to go and look at. Is there in the question, are they asking, she wants to know whether children from the school are likely to have greater level, so which means it's more than. So there we go, number three. So we're basing this information on the two questions. She calculates the test statistic, which she found that it's 4,196 and uses a computer program to determine uh, that the p value is 0, 0,0002 for the two sided testing, which is highly significant. She is, however, concerned that this significant result may be due to the relative large sample size. So she decides to calculate the effect size, the effect size, which is the Cohen's D to determine whether the results are meaningful meaningful or irrespective. So, she decides to calculate the Cohen's D using this formula. So if we go back, because I think that's what we need to be calculating, and then once we have calculated it, we need to determine whether that is correct. So going back, we need to take the mean of x1 minus the mean of x2. That's what we have. So you must take 55, 5.5 minus 4.9. And we need to take this pooled standard deviation, which is 1. Excuse me. Yes. Um, I see the on page 17, it continues. Same question continues. Yes, uh, yes. Gonna get the, yes, I'm yeah. getting the I'm getting the values to calculate this. Okay. Because we need to calculate it so that we can use this information. So I'm yeah. saying get this value, x1, which is 5.5 minus x2, which is 4.9 divided by one, which is this formula here. So just sub get those values. Do you have them? Do you have the values? The answer is 0 0.6. So, okay. So, D will be 4. Point, what was the value? 4. Point? 5.5 minus 4.9. Minus 4.9. 5. 5. 5. 5.5 minus 4.9 by 1. What what did you get? 0, 0,6. 0, 0,6. Yes. What is the answer? Based on the calculated effect size, the researcher can conclude that the, practica the practical implication mm -hmm. of her finding is? So can you say medium? It's two. It's medium. So it is two. OK. 61. A scatter plot is a graphical representation of the relation between. So if I have my X and my Y and I have. My scatter plot. It's interval and ratio, isn't it? So it would be two.
So number one says two variables measured on a nominal scale, which not. Two variables measured on a ratio and interval within a single a single group and two groups of subjects measured on an interval or a ratio on a single variable. That will not be correct because these are two variables from the same group. So if this is the age and we want to find the emotional intelligence, IQ, they come from the same group, single group, one group. So the answer is option two. Because this says it comes from two groups using single variable. So, so it means you say you want to see how age and age are do because there are two very the two groups so group age one or age nine and age eight so it will not make sense to do that because what are you trying to achieve with that nothing nada you can't do that so it has to be option number two because it comes from a single group but using two variables that is very important it and the variables difficult. needs to be numerical sorry the, the the data needs to be numerical this is a categorical did you want to say something uh, i was just saying it's difficult hey it's uh, tricky it's very tricky um yes so you just need to make sure that you Use like I am using visuals also to make sense of some of these questions. Do that as well. It's going to save you a lot of time. A researcher will calculate a correlation coefficient, which is R, in order to establish what? What is the correlation of coefficient tells you? One, the effect size of the test statistic where the two means were compared to be significant. The size of the relationship which exists between two continuous variable, which particular variable is distributed according to the Z distribution. One, two, or three? Two. Two. It two. Is two because coefficient of correlation tells you the strength and the relationship of two variables, numerical variables which is two. Question 63, which of the combination of the options below can be substituted in the following sentence to describe the situation when a significant negative correlation is found between two variable X and Y? Which of the following combination? So a person who scores Mm, on the variable is likely to have mm, once a score on the variable. So now you need to think about so, so X and Y. Because it says negative correlation, I just draw this to remind myself. Say when the values of that this one increases, the values of this one decreases. So let's see. A person will have a score of a high value, so that will be three. Uh, a person who has a score on X value, which is four, is likely to have a high value of Y, so it's two. Because the others, this one says when X is high, Y is high as well, so it's not correct. This one say when X is low, Y is low, then it's also not correct. So only number two will be correct. So drawing this might also help with reference to how you want to answer the question. A researcher wants to establish whether the type of employment category that is 
is filled by employees of a particular category. So here yeah, we're looking at the relationship between employment category and gender. The employees can be categorized as manager, human resources, administrative, maintenance, information, technology, and the agenda are male and female. We can squeeze this. That will be That's a question because we are testing two categorical variable. Based on your answers, 65 and 66, on the following scenario. A group of hospitalized patients who have been diagnosed as suffering from dementia are treated with a certain drug over a period of time. These drugs were prescribed to improve their mental alertness. A researcher studies a random sample of 30 patients who have been on this drug for a varying amount of time, hoping to establish a relationship between the number of days of the treatment drug and the patient's score of their mental alertness. So here yeah, we're talking about two numerical values. Which is the correct way or the correct formal way to express the appropriate null hypothesis for this research? And here we're talking about the relationship between two numerical values. So it means the sample, uh, the sample statistic will be R because it will be the correlation coefficient from the sample test. The population statistic will be phi. <laughs> I don't know what, how you pronounce it, but it will be phi, like a P -H -I, P-H-I, phi. So how do we express this? If you didn't know, we express it in terms of that phi, because that is your population parameter. So this will be your population, So R is your sample parameter. So we cannot use R, we cannot use the mean, because here we're talking about the relationship between two numerical values. Which is an appropriate test to determine the significant relationship between the number of days that the drug was administered and the score of their mental alertness test obtained from this sample of patients. Two. To the person's product moment correlation. It will be two, which is the Pearson product moment of correlation, which is the R. 67. What would the expected frequency in cell AX Cell AX, which is that, what is the expected frequency for the following contingency table? And I'm not going to read the whole sentence. So calculating the expected frequency, we say rho total. Oh, let me not write it there because you need to create the, the totals. So while I'm writing the formula, have a courtesy of completing the table and writing the totals. So... I want the total for here and the total for there and the grand total. So you can stay away from creating total from all everything. So create the total. So we will have to calculate the expected frequency by using row total times column. Total. Oh. oh, come on. Divide by the grand total. So have you calculated the total? This is 10, that is 9, 
that's seven and this is 12. And the grade is 19. 19. Oh, I thought I am the only one who did it wrong. So now we want to calculate the expected frequency for this AX. So row total, there are 10. Column total, 12. Divide by the grand total, which is 19. What do you have? Number two. Number two. 6.32. That is number two. Happiness? Are we good or? Happy. Yes. 68. We almost, we almost done. Three questions done with this one. Then we move to the next one. If there is no relationship at all between two variables, no relationship at all between two variables, what would be the most likely value of your Pearson correlation coefficient R? Number three. Number three, which is zero. This would have been a perfect negative relationship. This would have been a moderate relationship. A contingency table, which is the same as what we used here. A contingency table represents what? One, two, or three. The distribution Going. of frequencies, the frequency count of each variable of a number of possible outcomes, the frequency count if each outcome measured in two nominal scales of variables when they are cross-classified. Number three. Three. Will be number three. Good. Last one. End of paper. Whoa, just hold on for a sec. Yes. Uh, 69. Yes. Uh, just trying to make sense out of that. Okay, let me help you make sense out of it. The first one says is the frequency distribution of a variable. This is a summary table. A summary table because it will just have the category. And then it will have your count or your frequency. That is that one table. The second one it says is the frequency count of each number of possible outcomes of an experiment. That would be the same if this is your x variable, which is your outcome of a variable, which zero outcome comes up, one outcome comes up, two outcomes comes up, three outcomes come up. And you can calculate how many frequencies are there. Uh, maybe the number of time when I roll a die and one, does, one doesn't come up, I get two times when I roll it again and one doesn't come up, or one comes uh, one comes up one time, uh, there are four of those. And when I roll it, how many times does two come? Uh, sorry, remember we're talking about zero, uh, one. One comes up twice. Let's say there are three scenarios and so forth. That is that number two. Number three, it says a frequency count of each outcome measured on a two dimensional variable. So we have two variables. We have a gender and we have absenteeism. I like that. Absenteeism. When they are cross classified. So this is a, a let's say, staff members. Staff numbers are recorded here, and this is recorded the agenda, and this is recorded, we recorded their absenteeism there. Were absent or not absent? Yes and no, yes and no, something like that. Let's assume and we say this is females and males and female, there were yes and blah, 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 blah. So, 
Now taking the two variables, which is what they say there, when we have two nominal variables, but we cross classify them. Let's cross classify them. So yeah, I have my no absentism, absentism and my yes absentism. Yeah, I have my female and my male. That is cross classification of those variables. You see the difference? Okay, yeah. Uh, I was just, you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, what's the word? That nominal scale thing just threw me off a bit. Okay. And I'm sorted, thanks. Thank you. The last question. Which of the following values given is the closest to the probable value of the Pearson product coefficient correlation of X? So you need to calculate R. H. Those who know how to calculate R, Let's do that. Oh, it means I must log in onto the system. So now let's see if I can log in so that I can share my screen. Uh, let's see. Am I able to connect? Join the meeting. Sorry, I need to join. I must mute my device. Sorry. Okay, let me mute this site. Can you, can you, can you? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, wait, wait, I need to mute some. some, 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 some. Can you hear me now? Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. sorry. Can you hear me now? Yes. 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 So we back. And you are able to see my screen, my calculator yes. on my phone. Yes. yes. Let me remove that. And so I'm going to capture the, the information, the data on my calculator. But before I do that, I need to take my phone to state mode. So you press mode and uh, you will press the stat and because I'm looking for the number, the linear regression, I'll just press number five. So my table is there, but it has old data. Don't worry about that. I will clean it up. To clear my calculator, I just need to press shift and clear, and then they're all gone. So shift and AC all, then they are gone. So I need to put in, oh, I must go back to my calculator, uh, mode, stat, oh, come on, what's wrong with me? Let's clear that. Uh, mode. I 
have messed up. Okay, sorry. Mode, set, and linear. And I can capture my data. I will start capturing my x values first. One equal, two equal, three equal, four equal, five equal, six equal, seven equal, eight equals. Then I will go up with my arrows. Up, 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 up until I get to the first one. Oh, sorry. Then I go to the left or to the right, and then I start eight equal. Sorry, seven equal. Just, sorry just a quick one. The uh, what you call it? That table. How did you get that table? Okay, I'll come back again. Seven okay. equal six. Six equal five equal four equal three equal two equal and one equal so we have all the values i can just press the ac button and it looks like it's gone but it's not gone then in order for me to get to the stat, I will press the shift and button number one where it says A-S-T-A-T -A -T on top of the button number one. So shift one and you get S-T-A-T. -A -T. And as you can see, we have all these other variables Then I can go to the summation. You can see all those summations. This var, var will give you the var but we're not looking for that. We're looking for the regression. So I'll go to the regression and I'm looking for R because that's what we are looking for. So it says my battery is low. Let's plug it in. So I'm looking for R, I'll just press R and R is equals to minus one. So that is my answer. So depending on what, calculator you have. If you have your calculator on your phone and you're going to use that. So I'm going to start again. So shift clear on so that it clears all my information on my calculator. Then I go mode and you press where it says ST. Um, let me see what you see in front of you. Exactly. I cannot you see you where the gray thing is highlighted? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Press that. Wait, sorry. My calculator didn't clear my linear regression thing. So mode, and then you press the STA button. Uh, it's still not clearing. So let me take it back to the normal calculator. And it closed. So mode STA, and then you get this menu. Do you see there is the linear regression? You see that? Oh, it I think number five, okay. where it's gray. Now, if I click on it, then you get the table. So okay. since I, now I have all these values, I can delete them. So you can just press the delete, delete, delete button and clears your calculator from any of those values. So now you can capture the values. So what did we have? I think they were going down. So it's one, two, three, four, five. So you just say one and then press equal. Two equal, three equal, four equal, five equal, six equal, seven equal, eight equal. And you're going to use your arrows. These are your arrows. Mm -hmm. Go up until you get to number one, which is one. And then you're going to use the other arrow, which is the left arrow. The top one, the smaller, uh, the normal arrows. So to be on the Y variable. And because it's going down. So now I start with eight, eight equal, seven equal, six equal, five equal, four equal, three equal, two equal, and one equal. In a way, we didn't even have to do the calculation. I just want to show you that you have got that possibility that you can use. Um, and then 
once you have stored all your values, you just press the AC button, that the, the, the orange one, AC button. There. And you press the shift button, which is that button, the shift button. And once you have pressed the shift button, you press one. Uh, sorry, shift. And at the top here, when you press shift, it should have an S. That shows you that your shift is activated and then you press one. It's like on your on your computer, when you sh press shift, you placing it on a capital letter or you'll be pressing any other letter that is on top. So you're doing the same thing. So you will need to scroll because you, you will be on the data. The data will be the table that you used and you get all this other option. The summation, if you want to do the summations to find the answer for the summation, the variable, if you want to calculate the mean, the standard deviation, mean and max to do the quartile, the distribution, if you want to do the distribution, but we're not interested in that, we're interested in this. To calculate the slope, the intercept, uh, you can use those values. To calculate R, you just press the R button and press equal. Oh, my table is empty. So there's something wrong that I did. Uh, let's see. Did I, my, my data, my table is empty. I've cleared my table. But that is the, the thing that you need to be uh, doing. But let me show you because I don't think they expect you to do a lot of calculations like that. When you look at this, you can just do it like this quickly when you are busy on your calculate on your uh on your exam you just say because your x values they're going up the one two three four five one two three four five i can go like that so you say one and eight maybe it's somewhere there two and seven they will all come down anyway three and four five I'm not matching, so let's assume this was eight because I'm I'm just doing it rough rough. Let's do it this way. Rough. Seven six. So you, you should be able to see that seven six. So what do we have here? Three and six. And four and five, so four and five. Let's assume that is four and five, and five and three. You can assume that is there. So as you can see, that this is a perfect. So let's put the five. This is r is equals to minus one because it's negative. You can assume that that is that. So if the value here was one and one two and two, three and three, then you can say it's zero because it you will be right, you will be doing this zero. Oh, sorry. It will be a perfect one. So if it's like this, so then the, the values will go up like that if it's if they correspond. When it's zero, it will be one, 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 and then this is two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it means your thing will be like this. Your graph will look like that. Or if it's one, two, three, four, it will be like that. So that one will be R is equals to zero. Whereas this one will be R is equals to one. So you can just draw your graphs, rough, rough. But anyway, that is equals to one. I could have looked at this and say, but when X increases, Y decreases, that should be a negative. And this is a perfect negative relationship because it increases with the same rate at the same rate as it declines at the same rate. So it would be negative one. You can look at it that way. All right, so let's move on to the next paper. I think the difficulty with your paper is in the beginning because it's too much theories there. And I think we spent too much time there because we didn't know most of the answers. We had to Google them. 
when we come to the statistic part, it was easy and quick. So let's go to the beginning of this one. So we're looking at May, June 2019. So let's see if we can finish this one. So yeah, we back away. You need to also tell me whether these statements are right or wrong because I won't know most of this. A psychological theory is best defined as what do you know? What psychological theory is? Is it a description of human behavior about? Oh, based on observation, is it I an explanation one. of their relationship among psychological constructs? Is it a statistical inference based on measurement of a sample? So I know that this one won't be right. Oh, number one. one. I think it's one, the correct answer. Number one is the correct answer. Yes. And also this one, I won't be able to assist you because I still have to understand what a construct is. An abstract concept with such as intelligence, anxiety, and locus of control are referred to as. Mm -hmm. When we measure them, which measurement is referred to as? Number two. Number two. So they are constructs, and if we apply them as measurement, they are referred to as variables. Oh, yes. Now I understand what constructs are. Okay, now I understand. Not that I, I fully understand, but I think I get an idea. A psychologist conducts a study in which she measures the reaction time of students doing a psychometric test. She proceeds from the assumption that a fast reaction time is a good indication of high intelligence. This implies that reaction time is used as a way to intelligence. Is it an, a construct or operationalize or sample? Number one. One. Is it one. number one? The only one that's a verb is number one, so it must be one. Yes, because uh, <laughs> you take reaction time, you operationalize it, to create a new variable because reaction time will be a construct, isn't it? Yes. So you take a construct, you do operations on it, mm -hmm. and it becomes a variable intelligence. And then you. Yes. Hi, can you hear me? Can't hear you. Okay, sorry. I lost connection to my network. It says bad network connectivity. So we might struggle a little bit. But as long as you can hear me, uh, must I reshare my screen or is it still visible? 
It's visible. So visible. It's still visible on my yeah, side. It's still visible. Okay. Let's see how it goes. Um, okay. So, okay. So that will be number one. Okay. So question number four. When we refer to a latent variable, uh, it means the variable is. Oh, this hidden. one. I think I still. Number yeah. three, hidden. What we say? We said a latent variable, uh, variables that are hidden or visible. Is it hidden? It's hidden. Hidden number. Mm -hmm. Hidden. So that will be number four, three. Number three. three. Okay, the mm variable has an effect on the mm variable. Number three. Number three is correct. The in the independent variable has three. an effect on the dependent variable. Correct. Consider the hypothesis. Girls have better verbal ability than boys and they will perform significantly better than boys on a verbal ability test. If we represent the mean verbal ability test of girls, which is mu girls, and the mean, the mean of the verbal ability score of boys as mu boys, the following should be the appropriate statement of the hypothesis with regards to the alternative hypothesis. Better than number two. It will be two. Number two. Better than means number greater two. than. So yes. So it says girls are more than boys. So that will be number two. Number seven says a psychologist is conducting a study about how the behavior of a university students can be affected by the way in which they conceive of themselves. Number three. Makes, the okay, so question so, we did this yesterday. We did this yesterday, yes. A question provides an definition to a construct da da da. Which was option number three. Yes, we did this. A construct can be regarded as hypothetical. That's number two. Number two. Number two. Number two. Number two. Number two. Today it seems like we are flowing. Which statement about the aims of psychological research is the most appropriate? Number number three. Number three. Number 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 three. The goal is to test the psychological theories. Yes. Operational definition enable us to a make observation of the construct to link construct to observable phenomena. Is it number a, three? Not B, or is it both of them? It's both. Is it both of them? We make observation of the constructs. And we also link the construct to an observable phenomena. That's what you're saying is number three. Both of them are. Yes. Number three. Are oh, you still not sure? We can go what? Google. Correct. Yeah. Number three. Number three. Number three. Number three. I say number come? two. Number two. You say number two. Because so, apparently you can't observe constructs. You have to first. No, maybe I'm talking nonsense. Uh, no, I've no, forgotten. You, you can't construct them, you but can't, you yes. can link them to an observable 
phenomena. Yes, That's such just thing. Yes, I'll also go with two because construct is can't see it, can't observe. So we have two and three as answers. So let's go to our friendly Google constructs. Where will I find constructs? Then it means I need to go right at the beginning of your study guide because I think that's where I would they say touch you there. can observe a construct, but you can't measure it because you can observe, let's say, um, anger. You can observe and see if someone's angry, but you can't measure anger. So then you have to operationalize it to be able to measure it. But you definitely can observe it. I feel. Uh, According to my um, mm. <laughs> you could be right there. Yes, I also wanted to say that this? it's on page three or four of the study guide. Um, I can't find the actual answer, but the topic is on page yes. three. Yeah, I am. I'm, I'm on the topic, so I'm guessing everybody also can see construct. There I am. So construct. Psychologists develop explanation for human behavior and experience. To do this, they often make use of abstract concepts that uh, serve as explanation. So those are abstract concept, abstract concepts. So let's go and see where they define what these constructs are. Where do constructs come from? Okay. Is there any way where they this oh here? Yeah, these are constructs. So let's see. So probably uh imagine trying to see these things. Uh, sorry, Lizzie on page five in that block at the bottom at the top it says um the third line. It cannot be observed directly. Um, I, you must remember then now I'm I'm using 2012 study guide. <laughs> Okay. Okay. I don't know if it's the same. Uh, the okay. Page, so one, I, page five at that box there at the top. Uh, uh, okay. I don't have that. So somebody, uh, but I don't think I'm. So, okay. Let's look at this one where I am at uh, that everybody has is looking at because I don't think it's changed a lot. So imagine trying to look at this. What would you look like? Where? Oh, how big are they? What color are they? Uh, which they refer to those like your intelligence, anxiety, um, job satisfaction. So it is obvious that these general ways do not refer to physical object, but have an, ab an abstracted out of an experience of human behavior to serve as an explanation for certain aspects of a behavior. Concepts such as this are sometimes referred to as constructs. They are, in a sense, made up concepts that we can use to explain things like behavioral patterns that can that we can observe but cannot see themselves, at least not directly. So we can observe them. Okay. So what does the question say? Make an observation of a construct. Yes. I think yes. Link construct to an observable phenomena. I think yes again. Option three. So option three option. will be the right one. Where do they talk about operationalization or operation? Is it in the same that do they have a section where they discuss that? Yes, in the new module, I think it's on page five. So straight after constructs, then it's a section on theories, and then it's a section on measurements, which includes operationalization. Okay, so I did see measurement. It's in that section of measurement. Yes. The second How paragraph. are made visible through measurement. So, so if it's, it's made visible, it means it can be observed. 
I will give you. Um, sorry, just give me two seconds. Let me. Apologies, okay. Uh, so, have you found the answer? I will be happy with number three. Yes. Yes, I'm happy with that. Okay. Yes, I'm also happy with that. Yes. Yes, I'm happy. So, the answer is three. Okay, this one we also did yesterday. Empirically means is based on three. Observations. Three. observations. Yeah. Observations. Number three. Yes. Okay. An industrial psychologist believes that having a good education will increase the chances of workers getting promoted in the private sector. He decides to investigate this by using a sample of 100 employees at a company. Which one of the following is most appropriate way to formulate the hypothesis, the research hypothesis? So now he believes that education increases the chances of workers getting promoted. Good education. So we need to find which one is the appropriate one. There is a relationship between education and promotion. Employees high level of education and more than employees with lower level of level of education. Employees with high level of education are more likely to be promoted. Number three. Number three. Three. Number three, because it says it increase the likelihood of them being promoted. Which of the options below are not true? The probability values, which we call them the P values, are always is it not true? So, Two. 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 If you say two is correct, then you are telling me if I get a p-value of 20, I am right. That's what you are say, telling me because it says it's three. The correct answer is always greater than or equals to zero. So greater so than zero, not zero and above. So that is not true. Three. And we cannot talk about normally distribution. <coughs> we can still get the probability of a not distribute a discrete probability, which is not normally distributed. So the only one is three, three. Which is two, because it's between zero and one. Quickly, uh, they say which of the options below are not true? Not oh, are not. Oh, not. oh gosh are not true. So it's one. No, it's two. Two. <laughs> I, this is confusing. <laughs> it's, it's, one, two. it's one though, guys. Two. two. It's two, not one. Two, guys. Two will not Number be. Two. 
which one of the following options below are not true? The probability values. Yeah, the question is very tricky. So it will not be true if we say they are greater than or equals to zero, because then they will not be. Um, just, just hold on. If you're saying uh, it will not be if it's greater than or equal to zero, wouldn't 0 0.05 be greater than or equal to zero? Yes, 0 0.01 will be greater than or equal to zero. Exactly. 20, yeah, 20 will be greater than or equals will be greater than or equals to zero. 100 percent. 100 percent. But we know that. A probability cannot be more than one. But would, wouldn't 0 0.01 satisfy that statement as well? No, 0 0.01 will satisfy that statement. And 20 will satisfy that statement. But 20 will not make that statement true. Exactly, but there's no mentioning of 20s or any numbers here. No, no, but it says yes, greater than. That's than. the same thing. There's no mention of 0 0.01. You are making it up. No, I'm because not disagreeing with that. I'm just saying that also satisfies that statement. I'm not disputing about the, the exact numbers. Yes. yes. So it satisfies that statement. That is why I'm saying greater than the statement greater than zero will make any number that is bigger than zero or one be correct for this statement because that's what it says. It says it's greater than or equals to zero. So it means any number can be even 100, which is not a p-value. P-values, which are probability values, are always between zero and one. So they need to be only between that. So all probabilities are between zero and one. Not more than that, not outside of it. Are they always normally distributed though? Yeah. No. So three would be correct, I guess. It's always be normally, normally distributed to have the bell form. Yes. Not really, but because like, for example, like your chi-square test is not a normal distribution because it is a left, a right skewed test. But you can find the p-values of that test. But and also, three can be correct either because you have a minus one or minus minus number as a being less than one as well. Yes. Uh, and the, usually the Z score is minus one, but you never get the P value that is minus one. Yeah. So also that. So that is a very tricky one. Which option of which option? Which of the options below are not true. Very tricky mm. options. Because we know that P values are always between zero and one. But are they norm are they always normally distributed? They are not normally distributed. Like I said, for a chi square test is not a normal distribution and it's not normally distributed it is a left skewed distribution they are not they are not that, always that normally would, distributed but they can be normally distributed but they can never be greater than one but the question is saying are always which means it has to be always normally distributed and here it says but the question also it says they are greater than zero so it means so, any value bigger than zero or equals to zero will still be the probability so that is why i'm saying in terms of this maybe we should not overthink it i don't know who <laughs> doesn't overthink things and then can give can help us resolve this question 18 let's not waste so many times on it because I don't have an answer for you as well. Whether is it one, two, or three? Because based on the discussions that we have now, I'm now um, even more confused. I, uh, I have a. Uh, I saw something on page sixty-six. 
page 66. Okay, so on your side, 66 might be something else on my page. What but is the heading of that page? Like, uh, it just it's the solutions to some of the questions asked in the study guide, and it says probability values fall in. Uh, oh no, never mind. <laughs> I thought it might be something, but I don't think. Lizzie, I also think maybe for us in terms of what we're doing, it would be number two because they have only taught us basically about the normal distribution. We're not really learning about other distributions. So I think they kind of phrased the question for our coursework, not necessarily for <laughs> like... Um, Oh, I don't know how to phrase what I mean, but, yeah. you know, we're only learning about normal distributions in our coursework. So I think the answer that they're looking for is two, even if it might not be 100% correct. Or it, two is correct, but one can also be correct. But also three can also be correct. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I think we need a cup of tea. Uh, yeah. L let, yeah. Uh, let me also, because it's two o'clock, so we, we're leaving at five, so we still have 30, 30 minutes to go before we say let's break for tea. Wait, I, I'm thinking now. It's four o'clock. It's four o'clock. Uh, yeah, you see that question actually, it, they made it very tricky by putting it in that way where they say which one is not always. And then they also put it always. So yeah. it's very confusing. Very, very much. Because P values, we calculate, we get to talk about the P values once we get <coughs> the normal distribution. So, when after this Z scores, we can calculate the P values. <sighs> okay. Okay. It could so, also have been like an, a typing error, you know, maybe there was a section that was supposed to say the is one and two correct, or is two and three correct, or is one and three correct? You know that they maybe just didn't add in. I mean, that happens. Yeah, I agree with you because the, the first sentence says which options, which means it can be more than one. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe it was just like a, a sign or an exam typing error. It says which of the options, not which options. Oh. <laughs> so it's like which one of the options. Which you know? one of them? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so let's not waste time on something that maybe, we're not going to even find the answer in the book for now. Uh -huh. So we uh -huh. can move on. So question 13, if it comes up in the exam, you go piggy piggy mabelani. And then you just choose something like that. So yeah. Because I I don't want us to yeah to waste time on that one. So now let's move to 14. We will break at half past so that I can go have my coffee or tea as well. A class representative is chosen from a class with the 10 boys and 15 girls by writing the names of all of the learners in the class on the slip of a paper, slips of paper, putting those into one box. It seemed like we did this one time, asking their teacher to draw one name blindly. What is the probability of selecting a boy? Three. Two. Three. Three. Plus three. Three. 
Number three. What number is the two, probability of selecting a boy? So how many two. satisfy a boy? There are ten. 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 Oh, ten. ten. 25. So that will be 10 it's out two. of 25. So it's number two. Ten. Yes. That's number two. If they would have said what would be the probability of selecting one person, mm. then it would have been one over the 25. <coughs> a boy or a girl, or if they would have said it that isn't way. a boy uh, meaning one, meaning of boys. Look, there's 10 boys. The probability of selecting a boy, uh, what are the chances that a boy will be picked up will be one, 10 out of the 25. <coughs> Okay. If okay. I select one boy out of that, the chances will be I will pick a boy. Uh, how many times? Ten divided by twenty-five, whatever that times is. Okay, understood. And introductory statistics has nine males and fifteen females during uh, studying for a BSc degree, as well as eight males and. 12 females studying a BA. If one student is selected randomly from the class, what is the probability of selecting a BA student? Number two. Wouldn't it be one? Because you'd say 12 plus eight females and males are all studying BA and you're looking for BA. So a one B A student needs to be selected. So it's one of the one. students. Uh, number one. Twenty one. out of forty-four. Number one. Number two. Number one. There are twenty B A students it's out of forty-four. One. Number one. Uh, isn't it the same as what what number frequency? One, something that we did about frequency. Expected frequency also. No. That is number one. No. Mm. How many females studying BSc? 15 females. It's 15. 15 females. Mm -hmm. How many females studying BA? 12. It's 12. 12. 12. How many males studying BSc? Nine. Nine How males. many females, uh, males, eight? Total? Eight. 44. <laughs> 27 for females. What is the probability that one student will be collect randomly selected from the class? And what is the probability that that student is a BA student? Regardless of gender. Regardless of gender. Yeah, and they are feeling. Yeah, no, it's 20 over 44. Remember, regardless of Gender that will be those ones that will be 20. Option one. Option one. 24. That is why I told you it's very good to use a contingency table. You can visualize your answers very easy. The table represents a frequency count of the number of items that each person from a random sample of research participants can remember out of the list. The number of items remembered are those ones. The number of persons frequency are those ones. If X is the number of items likely to be remembered by a random person, what would be the probability of more than seven items being remembered? If one calculated this probability using the relative frequency approach. So what you need to do is go to the seven because they say greater than, it does not include seven. So it means we're looking for those ones. You need to also add all of them so that you can <coughs> many they are so calculate the total so calculate total 4 plus 11 plus 13 did they give us no they didn't they are so cruel 
you know, lecture are very cruel. They should give you the uh, 100 frequency or 100 number of people participating. So calculate the total. It's three. Do you have how much? Or how many? 32. 32. Mm. Uh -uh. It can be 32. What total are you calculating? You need to calculate the number of persons total. And oh, 100. 100. 100. 11 plus 13 plus 18 plus 22 plus 17 100. plus 9 plus 6. That's 100. 100. So it's 100. 100. That's what you need to be calculating. Now, they say we must use the relative frequency formula to calculate that. So since we're calculating the probability of more than seven, so we need that. So you say nine divided by 100 plus six divided by 100. That will give you the probability that you are looking for. Which is the same as saying, 9 plus 6 divided by 100. Number 2, 0.15. 0.15. Consider the following table. Here we have the mean of student X and the mean of class and their subject ABC and the standard deviation for each. In which subject did the student indicated as X in that column? Or uh, this second column do best relative to the rest of the class? very difficult by just looking at this so you need to calculate z scores for each one of them z score for a which will be fifty minus forty you can use the percentages if you want divide by five and that will give you your z which is two and you need to do for the other one which is fifty five minus fifty divide by five, which, which will give is one. And 60 minus 50 divide by two, which, by is, two one. which is one, which is one. one. So they say, oh, they say, which one do they do best related to the one. other, which means which one has the biggest score, Z score. Then it means they which are going two. more than the rest. So which is? One. Number one, one which is a, a. One. so a is the right one to choose. So if they would have said below, then you would have selected both of them. But other than, other than that, they would have swapped the values and made sure that one has the value closer or below or something like that. So the mean of the standard normal distribution is always, while the standard deviation is always. So what they are saying is describe the distribution of normal distribution. Your data two. is normally distributed with the mean of zero and oh. the standard deviation of one. one. <clears throat> Study the histogram below given where they have the marks of a group of students in the same class and the values on the horizontal class limit. So the groups. Assume we use this histogram on a basis of making a decision or making a prediction. Which of the following is best estimate of the probability that a student score will be between 40 and 60? Okay. 
So here they are asking you to go find the probability that is. So you need to go find the probability that x lies between. X lies between 40 yes. and 60. So now the challenge here is the following. We need to know how much, how many we have. What is the frequency? So if this is 10, Good ask me. Use this. this is 20. And what is this? I'm going to say this is 40 and this is 10. And this is 20. Okay. And the following 10 plus 20 plus 40 I plus. I don't know. Why is open there? I don't know. Ah, I don't read you read. yourself. 10 plus 20 plus that. Did you find the answer is 100? 100. Okay. So since we need to find the probability of those two, so you need to say that because I'm not going to apply the basic rule that we have here. Uh, 10 plus 20, which is 30, divided Eight. by 100, mm -hmm. which is 0, 0,3. That is 0,3. Number one. Number one. That is the answer that you are looking for. Okay. When a sample is randomly selected from a population, the sampling error depends on you remember what the sampling error is? Two. Your sampling error is your population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Number two will be it can be number two. It depends on the size of a sample because we use n small n population. Exactly. N. Exactly what you <laughs> Okay, so 21, an asymptotic property of a normal distribution cap. Cap refers to the fact that there two, two. and points in the normal means or touches the horizontal. <laughs> Okay, hey, question 22 and 23 are based on this scenario. The mark between, oh, sorry, the mark obtained for a psychology assignment by all students who completed it is 35 and the standard deviation is 15. John received 45 for his psychology assignment. Diani, if the score transformed, Diani, please, you are disturbing us. Diani, please. Mm, Tamai. I'm busy. No? So. Okay, so if the score are transformed into a standard normal distribution would john z score for his mark b what would his score be so we need to calculate z mean minus the mean divided by the standard deviation so our x is always given because there is our x because we want to know what john is in relation to 35 over the standard deviation of 15. What is the answer? 10 over 15 equals 0 0.6. 
seven. So the option one is correct. That will be option one. 23, referring to the scenarios above, what is the probability of a student chosen at random getting a score of 45 or better? Three. Yeah, number three. Um, okay, don't know who was calling me on on Teams. Okay, so we we need to go calculate the probability. So we know Z says 45 or better. So 45 or better means greater than. 45 or better means greater than. So it means when we go find the probability, because that's what we are calculating, the probability that our X is 45. I don't have to even calculate it because we did calculate this. 35 divided by 50. We know that it is we need to find the probability that z is greater than 0 0.67 we calculated it there so this 45 it's the same as what we have calculated there so i don't have to so we need to go find this value on the table remember we are looking for the greater than if it's positive we go to the smaller side if it's negative, we go to the larger side. That's to remind me when I go visit the table. So let's go to the table. Use this side to do the table. So 0 0.6, 0 0.67. That is 0 0.67. And we're looking for the smaller side, ne? 0 Suppose that A and B are mutually exclusive events. That is whether A is true will have no effect on the truth of B. The probability that A and B can both be true, that is said to be both can occur, is given by which of these formulas? Number three. Nope. Number two. Number two. It will be number two because it says also the A has no effect on B. So it can be number two. It okay. It is number two because it cannot be this because also this is not true. For multiplication, it's if one is dependent on the other, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, but this this is not true because. I cannot let me check my pen first. So you must remember the following. For a joint probability. Okay, I think it's two, ma'am. No, it's two. Two is correct. So I'm, I'm just making sure that people understand this. For the probability of 
A or B, which is either one of them happening. It's given by the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B with the flicking back on that is one if a and b are mutually exclusive then the probability of a or b will be equals to the probability of a plus the probability of b that is for mutually exclusive events because the probability of a and b will be equals to zero so for mutually exclusive event, that is the case. For conditional probability, when A has no effect on B, when A and B are independent of one another, they have no effect on each other. And that is what they are saying there on that other statement. Whether A is true will have no effect on the B. Therefore, it means also they are independent. Then for mutually, for joint probability of A and B will be given by the probability of A times the prob probability of B. Understood. Because for a conditional probability, the probability of A and B will be given by the conditional probability of A given B because B has a bearing on what happens to A. But in this instance, they say they both cannot affect one another. So therefore, if they can't, they are independent as well. So only option two is correct. This would have been correct if they were not mutually exclusive, but because they are mutually exclusive, this statement there is incorrect. It would have been correct only on that base. The first one is not correct because this should state O, not end. And only number two is correct. Okay. Study the following figure, which is a normal distribution have with the specific data so they told us what the sample mean is our sample standard deviation is and they say we need to find the probability that x is greater than 145 so it means we're going to be calculating z value where is 145 minus 150 divided by the standard deviation there of 5. What do you get? 1. Minus 1. Minus 1. Minus 1. Now, minus you need one. to be yes it's minus one so you need to be very careful as well because the sign says it's greater than so now when the sign says greater than remember that if it is positive we go to the smaller side if it's negative we go to the larger side. Ne? Even though the sign says greater than, we need to always bear in mind that the greater side is on this side. And we're going to find the probability for this side when it's positive in the smaller side, when it's negative on the larger side. So let's go. Sorry, Miss Elizabeth. Uh, sorry, yes. I, I just have a question. Um, mm. So I see your coloring in the the right hand side tail, although the Z was negative. Minus one, yeah. Yes, so I'm coloring in the bigger side because the sign says greater than. If the sign was less than, so all you will notice that on all of them, I'm I'm coloring because of the sign. 
So let's go back. Yes, yes. Um, I see that. Um, but but so in this case, this one, shouldn't the yeah, left hand yes. tail be colored? Sorry. No. Nope. Uh, no. Remember, you're not basing your answer based on what you get as on a Z value. Your your coloring is based on the sign of your question. The direction of your question tells you where the site the coloring will be. Okay, so when it is less than, the shading will be on the less than side. Therefore, also bear in mind if the answer is negative, it will be on the smaller side. If it is positive, it will be on the larger side. Ms. Lizzie, I don't understand that because the standard deviation is minus one. The Z is exactly. minus one. Exactly. So it should okay. be on the left of the mean. No, 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 no. Remember, the, side, the, the shading or the side of the table that you're okay. going to be... Okay, wait, let, let me open something else. Maybe... Did you guys attend my last session last week, Wednesday, or this week, Wednesday, or somewhere? I can't even remember. When was it? Tuesday. Tuesday. No. So, okay. So let, let me open the Tuesday slide. Okay. So. So you need to remember the following. We no, you're not going to base your answer for the probability on on your on the value that you get on the z. Ne? We base it on the sign. The sign will tell you. So if we're looking for, okay, I'm gonna stop stop here. If you're looking for the z value of less than. If you're looking for the Z value of a less than, it means we're looking for this, this side, the shaded area, this side. You see where the red is. Because of that less than, not what the answer of the Z value is. Based on the answer of your Z value, then you need to make your decision like this. Based on the answer of your Z value, if your Z value is negative, Therefore, it is on this side. It's negative. You're going to use the smaller side on your table. If it is positive, if your Z value is positive, then you use the larger side. And I'm not making up all this. Let's go to your normal distribution table. When is the normal distribution discussed? Where do we get to get to the go to the table? Okay, so I think you do have, uh, I hope they do explain that on here somewhere. Let's hope so. Let's hope so. Let's hope so. Okay, so here they explain the T value. Don't, don't they explain how do you get your P values. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> uh, where, where, ma, where do they explain your thing? Don't they explain it? Don't they give you an explanation on what I'm explaining to you? Uh, gosh. Is it not page 56? Page 56. There should be a note somewhere where they help you unpack where are you going to find or make a decision. So this talks to the hypothesis. I'm not looking for the hypothesis. I'm it's looking for... Miss Boy? Yes. I think if you have Appendix D, I don't know if it might not assist on page Appen 163. Yes. Appendix, Appendix D. Yes. On page? Uh, 163. 
let's hope on page 163 if i do have 163 on here Mm. Oh. Yeah. So I want still going, 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 Appendix A, Appendix C, you said D. Appendix D, yes, Appendix yes. D. There we go, here we go, here we go. Okay, so now, do you see uh, in terms of the sign, not in terms of the p-value, in terms of the sign, tells you where your, your less than is. See, in terms of the sign, if it's negative or positive, where your Z value is the shaded area, even though I'm shading on the other side, because I'm shading the greater than side because of where I want to tell you. So if you look at this, the shading of a negative, for me, I'm, I'm to make sense of the table as well, I just use if I if I'm looking for the greater than and my sign is negative, then I'm looking for the larger area. Can you see that this is a larger area? Because your shading for a negative will start from the negative side. Therefore, you are looking for the larger area. So I'm guessing from my side, I am confusing you by only shading the side where the sign is. But I'm still applying the same logic because if you look at uh, let's take the less than. If you look at the less than, what I'm saying is, if it if the z value answer is if your z value answer is negative, then we're going to look at the smaller portion. So what it says is, if it's less than, and that will be the answer that we're looking for. If it's greater than, so therefore if it's bigger, so I needed to change the shading. Instead of shading this for a positive i should be shading from here to there so that's what you are saying i should be helping you by looking at it in this way so then when i'm shading this side from the positive side to that side i'm looking at the larger side which is one and the same thing that i am saying instead of me shading the area Instead of me shading this whole positive area, I'm saying for the positive side, I'm going to look at the larger side, which is the same thing as what you have. Okay. <clears throat> so let me write what I have there. For the less than, I'm going to write it there. For the less than, if my answer is negative, I'm going to the smaller side negative smaller area if it's positive larger area positive larger area so now let's come to your example here i'm looking for the less than ne? less than negative smaller area that's what i'm saying less than positive larger area that's what i'm saying it's just that when I'm drawing the shades, it's where you get confused. But we're saying one and the same thing, whether you're, you're looking at shading it further or not. But my shading is based on, on this because it says I'm looking at the less than side. So if my, if my less than area, because I'm looking for the probability of less than, If my Z value, so you, you, you are saying I need to wait until I get my Z value. So if my Z value is negative, so I'll go because here is zero in the middle. If my Z value is negative, then I must come and shade the negative side. That is for the negative. If my Z value is positive, so I must come here and shade from the positive side and shade like that 
that's what you want me to do with all my examples so that you don't get confused. Is that what you say I must do? I'm even more confused now, but I don't want to be, maybe I'm the only one, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. No, I'm, so, I'm so confused. <laughs> you are also confused now. Okay, so true. I'm also so. so I thought I understood this thing. I don't right know now. which one completely. Now. now I don't know which one you will. Okay, I must use in order for you to be able to understand this better. So what I'm saying is. What they are explaining here with the type of shading, for me, when I'm making sense of it, I'm looking at the sign and then I decide in terms of my Z, whether is it in the negative or in the positive and where do I go on the table? That's how I make sense of your tables. Because I'm not familiar, I'm not too familiar with the table, but I had to find an easy way of me remembering how your tables work. My table can, can I quickly come in? Are easy to understand. Yes, I, I my, explain. My thinking here is uh, they can come in as well. My thinking is you get the z value and then you go to your table, you draw the line where uh, the value is, and if you know you have to be looking for a smaller area, you shade that area. If you know you have to be looking for a larger area, you shade that area. I understand both ways that you you trying to explain. But I think the other side is as I'm saying now, yes. get your z value, go to your go to your to your, your graph, and then if you have to shade, if you have to look for the smaller area, shade only the smaller area. Then yes. it doesn't confuse. Uh, okay. I'm not sure if I'm explaining it the way. Uh, yes, I understand now what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. So let's let let me explain it that way then. So 145 minus 150 divided by 5, we got 1. Yeah, we got minus 1. Yes. So now we're going to draw the graph. I need to remember that. So because we're looking for the greater than, and since the answer is negative, it always helps me, negative 1, so it means I must start shading from here. Yes, and go there. Exactly. Because there. you're looking for the bigger part, that's the shaded part, right? Okay, then you understand it much better if I do it this way. So this yes. is minus one. Yes, this uh -huh. makes sense. When I see the minus one on the graph, so on the left of the mean, it makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so then you know that you're looking for the larger well, side. Yes. Okay, I must use this method so that you understand. Okay, in future, I know now. <laughs> not to confuse you. I don't want to confuse you. Okay, so we know that we need to go to the larger side. So as long as you understand where we need to be at. So we need one. So these are zeros, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and this is one. And we're looking for the larger side. So if I go up the table, we need larger side is number two column number two to the left from the right so which is 0, 0.8413 oh yeah ole 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 okay now i understand so if we get another question that does this i will do it in this method I will also so change, i will also change <laughs> my slides that. as well so that <laughs> It, yeah, because I was I, not sure. I would I try to make sense of anxiety of was sky high suddenly. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so question 26. Oh, yeah, no, we didn't even take a break. Okay, let's do question 26 and 27, and then we will take a five minutes break. Who is doing research on the IQ uh, scores of students? As Mean that the IQ will on average be greater than that of an overall population. He states the hypothesis as such. After drawing a random sample of 50, he finds that 
they have a mean IQ of 107 and the standard deviation of five. If it was the case that the null hypothesis is actually true, what would the expected mean of the sample be? And this is the same as what we did the previous time. Yes, they've already given us the standard deviation of five, isn't it? Yes, but they want to know what will be the expected mean of the sample B. Oh. Which is almost similar to the same question that we did the previous time. Number three, more than. Number two. And I think we chose number three. Num the last time we chose more than the mean of a population, did we? Or did we choose the same? I think we did chose you say the not more. equal. We said not equal to. Hi, yeah, I can't even well, remember. Was it big money learning? That big big money learning one. I think it was. But I think we we settled for. It was 40, 44. 44. 44. What did we choose? It was, it was a not equal. Piggy, piggy, It was three. We chose three. I think. Not equal to. Because we looked at the side. Yes because of the sign on their hypothesis yeah. testing, because we said if, if the null hypothesis is actually true, therefore it means this is not true, so it will be not more than. Oh, not more than. Oh, it will be more than, yes. So, the level of significance indicates number one. Number one. Did look up this on their study guide as well. When a statistical test yields a large p value, which of the following statement is more likely to be correct? Now you need to remember that the decision says if the p value is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. That's the decision rule. So if the p value is greater than or equals to alpha, we do not reject the null hypothesis. So therefore, it means the null hypothesis is true. So if the p value is larger, what will be the statement? Two. It will be number two. Okay, 29. The central limit theorem implies that for large samples, the, mm, the sampling distribution of the mean across many repeated samples will be approximately to normal. The distribution of the sample values for a specific variable will be approximately normal for a very large sample. The sampling error for the repeated measurement of random variables will increase as the population increases. Three. Because we're talking about the central limit theorem, where it will say if my stand, what happens when I increase three. my sample or my standard deviation? I hear number number one, number. Three. Did anyone say number two? 
Number one. Someone said number one. I think it's number three. Central Limit Theorem. The distribution of the sample means will become more normal as the sample size increases so that the larger and larger samples, the shape of the distribution of the sample mean will also become increasingly normal in a form. Number one. <clears throat> so number one says sampling distribution of the mean across many repeated sample size will be approximately normal. The distribution of the sample values for a specific variable will approximately be normal for a large sample size and the sampling error of a repeated measurement increase will increase with the population increase. No, we're not talking about the population. You can increase your population is the increase in terms of your sample, the number of samples that you have. So only number one is correct. The size of a significance depends on the size of a level of significance depends on number two depends yes, on number two value determined by the researcher. When doing one sample, as uh, okay, we do this one last one and then we take a break. When doing one sample statistical test, the value to reject the null hypothesis implies that the difference between the calculated sample mean and its expected value as predicted under the null hypothesis is due to the failure to reject the null hypothesis implies that the difference between the calculated mean and its expected value as predicted under the null hypothesis is due to. Would it not be one? And uh, I would think, because it talks to uh, uh, what you call the, uh, whether there's any relationship or not, dependency or not. So, in the null hypothesis, we say they are independent. Exactly. And in the alternative, it states they are dependent. And if we don't reject the null, it means uh, they are independent. Yes. So if we're not rejecting the null hypothesis, we're stating that that is true, so they, it will depend on 
due to the independent variables. Because that is not due to the probabilities, not due to the chance, and it's not going to be due to the dependent variable because then we are rejecting. We are not rejecting the null hypothesis. Okay, so let's take a five minute break. We'll be back exactly at five minutes at, at five o'clock. <clears throat> I just want to go grab water. <clears throat> Lizzie, what time are we going to tonight? Uh, no way. Tonight I'm going to be resting because. Uh, no, no, no. I mean, what there. time are we are we working till tonight yet? From I thought it was just till five. Is it until five? Are we are we there yet? <laughs> I think so. I'm <laughs> still enjoying myself. <laughs> Let's just finish. Yeah, we are almost done. Three hours. Actually, we done. Is it three hours or yes. Yes. Hours? Let no, guys, let's just guys, finish the paper, guys. Let's enjoy yourself. Yeah, let's enjoy yourself until she's tired. Some of us don't mind going up until eight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it's up to you. I think those of us are desperate here, but it's totally your business here. Yeah. Okay, if if we if you want us to finish the paper. <gasps> Marvelous. Uh, what I will do is uh, what I will do is we will have to get off this channel because then <coughs> that is another thing. So we'll have to get off the UNISA channel and go to the private one because then we need to stop the recording because <coughs> they monitor the times as well. <coughs> I can't go up beyond that. I didn't check the time that we finishing at five. It's still it's so, so funny. Let's let's and conclude. Yeah, let's conclude the session, uh, and then we will join again. Uh, give give me some some time. Let's let's start yes. restart this the session on my private uh, session uh, at half past five. Is it fine? That's fine. Perfect. That's yes, it's fine. Then I can, then I can uh, go eat a little bit and rest a little bit and look at. My husband in the eye at least for 30 minutes a day. <laughs> yeah. so, so, I, I will post that I will share the link on uh, on the WhatsApp. So let me just close off uh, on WhatsApp group. Yes. Uh, I think complete the register where to need to complete it. Yes, I am going to post it. Please don't go before you, you, you do the register. Otherwise, I will also post it on the WhatsApp group uh, for those who can see the chat. Let me go find the register first. What's the WhatsApp number, please? We are not on WhatsApp group, ma'am. Okay, I will share the WhatsApp link, uh, the link uh, just now. Um. Okay, so let me close off before I let so that I can close the recording properly. You know, this is uh, I must stop the recording and I must thank you guys. Thank you for being here tonight and for an awesome discussion. Uh, and good luck with your exam. Bye. Thank you, thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.